Hello everyone, Wordfire here, and I've got a um, new or like different uh, Sherlock Holmes game. This is um, a series of three games uh, in a series called Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. This is case number one. Um, the three games are like sold together, uh, from what I understand, originally as well. But also, you can buy them, well, all three on Steam. And this is case number one, the case of the mummy's curse. I'm gonna say right now, this is definitely different from like the regular adventure games we've had, which I'll come so far. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. But um, I hope this is gonna be. A lot of fun anyways, like Sherlock Holmes, um, he's a bit different. <laughs> His personality is slightly different in this version uh, from what I normally... Yeah, but I mean, I guess a different interpretation of Sherlock Holmes, you know. Um, but but yeah, so we're gonna go through, like, you see here Holmes' introduction, and he's... Yeah, Sherlock Holmes is going to uh, explain a bit himself about the game. We're gonna go through all the like intro things and play the game and um yeah you'll see what I mean. London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen and institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. They too will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come, the game's afoot. So, there we go. That was um, Mr. Sherlock Holmes explaining a bit of the game. Um, it's interesting to see that he it looked like he was looking at his lines. <laughs> Yeah, so now we're gonna see about, uh, read about the regulars here. Mr. Henry Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's Times. Alright, so I, I, I can, yeah, I can hear that it's a little low the the voicing here but i hope that's going to be okay um yeah this is a records office housing documents pertaining to births marriages deaths and last wills and testaments quentin hogg is a crime reporter for the police gazette he is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating he has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource Porky is not a pillar of society, I dare say, but he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars, or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Jolly good one, Holmes. Yes, Watson. Well, the bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. Porky is the proprietor. 
He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. Ah, oh, Scotland Yard. If the Yard knew how to examine evidence with any skill, there would be no need for our services. Inspector Lestrade is the pick of a bad lot. But it is true they may be a source of valuable information. After all, the professional police have methods for gathering facts that are not open to us. Edward Hall is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey. He's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession. Holmes, don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a barrister and a solicitor? Yes, of course, Watson. A solicitor handles the routine legal business of our society. If you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. Head clerk Disraeli O'Brien is your contact in the Office of Records. The Office of Records contains legal records, both criminal and civil, as well as state papers. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say sitting encyclopedia of the office's affairs. Now here is a person who usually gets in the last word. Langdale Pike is a human reference work on social scandal, especially on the London scene. He contributes bits of gossip to the garbage papers that cater to an inquisitive public. If I can't find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the great London library. It is a wealth of information. This gentleman is the head chemist at Scotland Yard Criminology Laboratory. It is rumored that Murray lives in the lab. He is eternally bent over one of his tables trying to extract the history of a crime from the physical evidence he's been given. Sir Jasper is the chief medical examiner for St. Bartholomew's Hospital. He is London's greatest forensic pathologist. You can depend on him for all the technical details that can be obtained from any corpse whose cause of death is in question. So there we go, the regulars. We'll go through our sleuthing tools. I think you'll tools. find these tools to be positively invaluable as you endeavor to help Holmes solve these cases. Right, so the newspaper should be your first stop when starting a case. Simply choose one of the papers and look for relevant names and locations in the articles. You can scroll each column up and down. The directory contains names and places to help you in your sleuthing. When you hear or read about a curious name, select the appropriate tab to look it up. Then use the directory tools to investigate further. Once you select the name or location, select one of the three icons below. You can send Holmes and Watson to the destination, send the Baker Street Irregulars instead, or search Holmes' files for additional information. You can use your notebook in two ways. Select the Clue History tab to review information on what you've seen and done. Select the Clue Hints tab to request a hint from Dr. Watson himself. Sending the detectives to a location will play a video scene. Some scenes are pertinent to the case, while others may be dead ends or red herrings. Touch the video for playback controls. Enable or disable subtitles in the settings menu. If you believe that you have enough information to solve the mystery, select the gavel icon <coughs> to bring your case before the judge. He will ask you specific questions to determine if you are indeed a master sleuth. Certain actions in the game will cost you clue points. Your goal is to solve the mystery in as few points as possible. Note that you will not incur additional points by sending the detectives or the irregulars to a duplicate name in the directory. <coughs> there is, though, um, there, there's though no penalty for, like, there's no penalty in-game for, uh, incurring points. It's just, like, a way to measure yourself, sort of. So when I'm playing, I'm gonna be completely ignoring the clue points. I'm gonna have, like, a billion trillion clue points. Um, I don't care. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, X here. So, have to play the game. And we have resume, save game, begin new game, and uh, the settings here, if anyone wants to look at those. Now, the point of this game here is to uh, gather information. Like, we're not really out and walking that much. We are, um, yeah, looking through newspapers and uh, sending Holmes and Watson to locations and, and gathering info. So actually, I'm just going to get myself paper and because we will will be useful to write down names and stuff that we find in newspapers. Um, so yeah, a lot of intro, but um, I think we're gonna have uh, hopefully a lot of fun. So we're gonna begin a new game. 
Yes, I want to re erase my current game. Within a lantern-lit sitting room at 221B Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes slowly takes a pull from his pipe, while Dr. Watson, reclining after a bit of tea, peruses a discarded copy of the London Times. What rubbish! What balder dares! You must have read something terribly disturbing, Watson, for you to be so overwrought this early in the morning. Indeed, Holmes. It's irresponsible of the Times to play upon people's superstitions. Ah! You must be referring to the affair of the mummy's curse. It has the entire city in an uproar. Three men dead, and they expect us to believe that a 4,000-year-old mummy was the murderer. I'm surprised you haven't taken some interest in this case, Holmes. To the contrary, my dear Watson. I have made some inquiries. Because, I dare say, I do believe this murderer is a much younger chap. And you can always, you can always replay videos as much as you like. All right, so here is, yeah, this is the main menu of the game. This is basically where we play the entire game from. So we have the game menu, the judge, newspapers, directory, and notebook. So the newspapers, we have four um, of the times, and here we get um, information about how we use this. So knowing he can't be everywhere at once, Holmes reads the paper daily. You should as well as it contains information to help your case. Simply choose one of the four papers to begin searching for clues. The Xbox closes the papers. So we're going to go through all the times issues there. So here's our directory. We have all the regulars. We can click them and then we can do search Holmes files, send a regular or send the detectives. And then we can go through, there's a lot of names here. And so we need to find and, and place us. So basically, yes, we need to go through the papers uh, and also talk to people to get new names and places to, um, uh, you know, go search. Select the tab on the left or right. Then simply select the name you may have heard or read about. Now you may do one of the three things. Peruse Holmes's file for additional inf files for additional information. Send the detectives to that location to investigate or send one of the irregulars there to find out more. The X box closes the directory. And we have the notebook. So we have clue history. Dr. Watson learns from the Times that a mummy is supposedly responsible for three men's deaths. He does not reveal the names, but they are certainly listed in the articles. And we can also get clue hints here. We can read here. The clue history tab will show you what actions you have taken to solve the case to this point. I, it will also show you how many clue points you have occurred, accrued. If there is more information that can fit on the screen, you can scroll the page. If you fill up a page, a new one will be created. Simply select the appropriate arrow to turn a page. The Xbox closes the notebook. So we will begin with going through the Times newspapers. So we can start with February 6th, 1888. So we have, and we can scroll these two um, columns independently, which is, I think is very interesting. So we have some personal stuff here. Someone welcomes someone home. Someone is uh, regretting not keeping an appointment. Uh, some relatives of some Jacob Fitchett. But I think for this case, we are more interested in anything about a mummy. So let's see, sporting with live ostriches, strange event, sudden gale in the Isle of Man. Uh, blew, uh, blew off the roof of a stone church yesterday. Miscellaneous. Uh, right, someone drowned. Uh, oh, four men drowned, actually. Um, a letter to the editor of the Times. Um, an organization of a small force of plainclothes constables mounted on bicycles with the rapid and noiseless patrolling of streets and roads by night. Uh, there's a Queen Anne statue coming up, okay. Uh, we have a murder in Bloomsbury. Shortly after 10 p.m., someone heard cries, found the body in a study. Uh, Mr. Mason. Uh, right. Hmm, another letter. Let's see. I think this might be interesting, though. To the editor of the Times, Sir, I feel I must write to formally register my outrage at the irresponsible handling by your paper of my recent discovery. Your reporter's insinuation that I lack the credential to unearth such antiquities is an utter affront. 
For your information, I am a world-renowned authority in my field, especially Egyptian studies. Your reporter obviously has no appreciation for the significance of such a finding and has no understanding of archaeology. I demand a retraction post-haste. Now, it doesn't like necessarily have to do with the mummy right now, but it does have to do with Egyptian studies and archaeology. Oh, I can actually click and drag too. Oh, awesome. So, I'm still going to write down... It could be interesting. So, Earl of... Downey. So. Uh, some entertainment. Oxford Music Hall. Irish Exhibition. No. No, I don't think there's anything more there. So. Alright, so now we have London, August 17th, 1888. <clears throat> Let's see, some births. Nah. <clears throat> Marriages. Well, I guess no one has married a mummy, hopefully. Deaths. Catherine King, widow of someone. Uh, okay. Oh, lions murdered in Hyde Park. Two lions, both male, were found shot to death in Hyde Park in the early hours of this morning. Whoa. Bizarre. Letter to the Times. Having agonized on what it takes to have you print one of my many critical missives, I have changed my tack to say how much I love everything, even the Times. <laughs> okay. Someone's charged with murder. Um, the body of William Aspinwall was shot by John Rowe, his stepson. Uh, Rowe went to Aspinwall's hand and some money. Not very mummy. Accident on docks. Barry O'Neill, lion tamer for Roy Slade's wild African extravaganza, was injured at the show as the show was being unloaded of, at the London docks. Um, uh, well, maybe those were the lions that were shot in Hyde Park. <laughs> appeal to the public. The investigators of Scotland Yard have appealed to the public for any information on any the reason the disturbances in Whitechapel. Whitechapel sounds like uh, Jack the Ripper. But here we have something. Recent excavations in Egypt. That sounds sounds mummy-ish enough. At the London University College on Wednesday afternoon, before an appreciative audience, Dr. Ebenezer Turnbull delivered a lecture which dealt with the history of excavations and the method by which they may most profitably be conducted. Dr. Turnbull and archaeologists James Windybank and Andrew Weatherby are embarking this week on a new Egyptian expedition, excavating Katabet's tomb at the head of the Valley of the Kings near Karnak and Luxor. Saturday's lecture was illustrated by photographs thrown on a screen by the electric light which showed vividly and distinctly not only the work done at its various stages, but the modus operandi, the conditions under which work of this character must be carried on, and the instruments necessary for the purpose. The, and enabled those present to realize that, in classical study, as in the sciences, there's an ample field of experiment and discovery open to the individual. Dr. Turnbull prefaced his lecture by an explanation of these real objects of the excavations. In these days, whatever might have given the first stimulus to such efforts, the primary motive was certainly not to find and keep treasure, any more than it was the aim of the astronomer to possess a star. The modern archaeologist was as little to be confounded with the treasure seeker as the mineralogist is with the gold miner. Was with the gold miner. Yeah, I realize that the background music is very low right now. Uh, I should probably. Uh, I'll. We'll fix that. Um. His aim must be to restore to life the monuments of bygone times to bring vividly before us the various phases of ancient societies, whether civilized or and uncivilized. And then we have some law notices and a mysterious death. Uh, Stephen Lyons was found lying in St. George's Road, Southwark. Body had been robbed. Uh, okay, two women of ill fate and a man described as a laborer were seen with him. Okay, cool. But, um, okay, we have the mummy. So we have a couple people here. We have a doctor. Turnbull. We have a James Windybank. And we have a... Whoops. Uh, Andrew... Weatherby. Um, and they were at London University College. I don't know if we can go there, but 
London University College. Wait, how can how can something be a university and a college at the same time? Maybe that works. I'm so confused about the whole co concept of college, man. Okay, let's um, just go and drag up. Whoops, this a little bit like the background music. Okay, now we have a lot instead. That particular music is a lot though. But, um... Oh. Oh, I didn't save! Okay, um, just a moment while I go back. Okay, so actually, this is the game we were doing. It autosaves. So, apparently, they thought it was good to have piping hand. Holmes and a stout colleague exit the carriage and move through the dark London streets. A light fog obscuring his trademark deerstalker and overcoat, which he doesn't wear in the original books but like one time but sure the master detective pauses and turns come Watson the game is afoot I see we have zero points here so we haven't actually done anything so it auto saves good to know I'm confused I'm sorry all right let's go through all the times and then we'll uh, you know have this as one episode so we have a couple births a marriage a death so miscellaneous, oh, St. Bartholomew's Hospital. The meek guy, I think, worked there. Or the one who you can send corpses to. Personal SC, a telegram for Baines from Japan? Nah. Oh, something to the editor of the Times. A long one. Uh, from some Mrs. I. Persano. Uh, her late husband was a well-known and respected journalist. Uh, something that he died bizarre death. Isadora Persona was found stark staring mad with a matchbox in front of him which contained a remarkable worm unknown to science. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it could possibly have like an impact. Like, we don't know that right now, but he survived only a few days in the state of madness before succumbing to a mercifully quick death. Police failed to make any progress in the case. Uh, discovered new information pinpointing the guilt to, to Mr. James Fillymore disappeared without a trace the same day my husband was fiendishly driven mad the police treat me with condescension they deserve for hysterical widows so I am now turning to you and the public uh, I believe he left uh, Mr. Fillymore who left England aboard the cutter Alicia okay someone was found dead at the theater the usher at the elephant and castle discovered a body of a man apparently murdered during the last night's performance all right, the police were not able to identify the man. He was in an entertainment box. The man occupied alone. Apparently been stabbed to death. Okay. Uh, oh, someone called William Breeze, 15, a laborer, was yesterday struck by lightning and instantly killed. Ooh, poor thing. He was working at the hay in the hayfield. There was a fatal railway accident yesterday at 7.30. This is March 5th, 1899, by the way. Uh, oh, a cow. Ooh. Oldenburg jewels are stolen. Ah, uh, someone. Okay. So, police. Uh, Ash Asa Pierre, 32, of French nationality, was charged with performing with a bear by the name of Clyde in a public highway. Uh, some shipping departures for West. Well, for Bangkok, Havana, Hong Kong, Calcutta. Right? Latest intelligence from our correspondence. Oh, archaeologist dead in mummy's tomb. Now we're coming to something here. Karnak, March 4th. Professor Ebenezer Turnbull, organizer of the Katibet tomb expedition, was found dead in the tomb early this morning. Okay, so Ebenezer Turnbull dead March 4, 1889. Alright. The inner chamber was reached early in the year after much difficult labor, and the archaeologists were quite ecstatic over the excellent condition of the sarcophagus, chamber artifacts, and the catabet mummy itself. The party was in the final weeks of its work in the area when disaster struck. Oh, well, yeah, you can't even hear the background music here. Wow, so weird. Okay, I, I will fix. Mr. Turnbull had worked late into the night, remaining in the chamber alone after other members of the party had retired for the night. His body was discovered by Mr. Andrew Weatherby, another of the project archaeologists. Mr. Turnbull had been strangled to death. 
ancient linen bandages were found around his neck. Upon hearing of the professor's death, several of the natives working on the excavation called upon Isis and Osiris for protection and for forgiveness for disturbing the sacred tomb. Inscriptions found on the canopic jars and doors indicate that this death may be the mysterious work of the ancient god Tuamautef and his goddess. I have no idea who Tuamautef is. I've never heard about that Egyptian god before. Very interesting. I'm going to write it down just to look it up. Tuamautef and his goddess. Okay. Then we have some entertainments here. Uh, pianoforte recital for Sonata. Ooh, Elephant and Castle. Bunty and Clyde. Miss Minnie Cavill. Percival Theater. Alexandria Palace. Fancy Balls. Disaster at Sea. Philadelphia Correspondent Telegraphs. Uh, Gloucester, Massachusetts. Dispatch brings terrible tale of sea. Told by Captain Ryan on the, of the schooner SD story. Arrived yesterday from Iceland, having sailed on February 19th off the south coast of Iceland. He reports a large fleet of French fishing vessels had gathered to fish. Heavy gale. Uh, six vessels were lost with their crews. One had her deck swept, lost, losing three men. Third, her captain and uh, two men. Oh, 137 men. Ooh. Many vessels were so badly damaged they had to be abandoned, causing 300 men to be left in Iceland in a destitute condition until a steamer arrived to carry them away. Few natives living there, and the men endured great hardships. Oh dear. Right, we have one London Times left. It's April 12th, 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 1889. So we have some births, some marriages, deaths. Oh, the mummy strikes again. The body of James Windybank was discovered late yesterday in the room he was preparing for the British Museum's exhibit of newly discovered artifacts from the tomb of Ketebet's mummy. So James Windybank is dead. Whoops. Uh, April 11, 1889. I don't know if it's... Yeah. The archaeologist was found strangled. Around his neck were linen bandages of the type used by the ancient Egyptians in wrapping mummies. Windy Banks is the third murder to be associated with the mummy Ketabet in the past six weeks. The archaeologist had accompanied the London University-sponsored expedition to Egypt. The project has been cursed with ill luck since the first discovery of the tomb several months ago. Its organizer, Dr. Ebenezer Turnbull, was murdered in the actual tomb itself in early March. Another archaeologist, Andrew Weatherby, met a similar fate on board the ship returning to England just last week. So he's also dead... Ah, uh, well, April on ship. Um, the Jardin ship, Eastern Empress. Okay. Jardin ship, uh, Eastern Empress. Uh, was the scene of the mysterious death. The shipboard investigation was handled by Captain Herman Ramsey. Okay, maybe we can talk to him. Captain Herman uh, Ramsey and his first officer, Luther Ten Luther Tenne. We can certainly talk to those, hopefully. Scotland Yard has declined to name any suspect at this time. Oh, look! <laughs> John H. Watson has written a letter to the editor of the Times. All right. Sir, as a man of science and medicine, I must protest these innuendos of murderous mummies. The ancient Egyptians had progress, but they had certainly not found the secret of everlasting life in the material world. Even had they, we cannot bring home the murder of two men to a 4,000-year-old mummy. I can only repeat that this is utter nonsense and border dash without the slightest scientific basis, and a disgrace to the pages of your venerable newspaper. I am, sir, your obedient servant, John H. Watson, M.D. Oh, someone apparently discovered the coffin of Alexander the Great in Constantinople on April 11th. Further examination of the sarcophagi recently discovered in Sa Saida in Syria shows that among them is the sarcophagus of Alexander the Great containing the body of the monarch. Not sure, but okay. All right, here are some more uh, letters about the mummy that people have sent to the Times. Letters to the editor of the Times. 
Sir, with regard to the recent mummy murders, I would like to suggest that we abandon our attempts to disturb the ancients in their graves or otherwise. This applies not only to such excavations as have become so common in Egypt, Morocco, and other foreign lands, but also to such projects in our own British Isles. If the hypotheses of such men as James Ferguson, who believes that Stonehenge is the ancient sepulchral monument of the Saxon Druids, are true, we should leave these burial grounds undisturbed. Surely if these murders are the work of some present-day mortal human, the police will discover his identity and bring him to justice. I do sincerely believe, however, we should not meddle in the magic and sorcery of which we know not, for we have not the means to control the forces thus unleashed. Respectfully yours, J.A. Merton. I don't know if that's an important person, but we can always write down. Merton. All right. London, April 9, to the editor of the Times. Sir, the recent mummy affair points up to a fact I have been trying to convince my fellow Britons of for quite some time. That is the phenomenal number of crimes, particularly those of a serious nature committed by foreigners. Shouldn't we act now to restrict access to our beloved isle before this tragedy becomes yet worse? And there's always someone who can turn everything into something like about racist and about immigrants and I don't know. Okay, we can write down his name though. Johnny Bulldog Trent. And we have some shippings here, wrecks and casualties. Uh, a steamer, I've been in collision with a French steamer. Uh, foreign arrivals from Bombay, Madeira, Philadelphia, Missouri. Uh, Sydney, Kabul, London, home arrivals. Fatal accidents. Mr. Francis Scott Somerset, while riding in his grounds, received a concussion of the brain and died in a few hours. Alright, well now we have a lot of names. We've gone through all the times here, and we have some names to start looking into. Uh, maybe we should go to Scotland Yard first, talk to Lestrade, um, and then we can start, yeah, start talking to going, you know, to the houses of the suspects and talking to the captain, definitely, and, uh, and stuff. So yeah, it's a definitely investigative in a slightly different way. We have to find a fact ourselves, but I think this could be, um, I mean, it's slower in a way, definitely to play, but I think it was, this will be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to play these three games, and uh, I really like the fact that the videos are kind of cheesy and sort of low production, but like it makes it fun in a way. <laughs> But yeah, so I hope you guys will enjoy this game as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see y'all later.